Alright guys, Touch Crown Mickey again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Two crazy reverse sweeps last night to close out the matches. Vegas versus Miami. Loads of reactions to that as well after the ridiculous Optic versus Rocket affair. But also Dashi having to respond to some interesting hacking accusations going down over the last few days. Very much on Twitter. Your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. There is a Challengers Cup this weekend. I'm not going to lie. I've never really seen anything quite like this. Where these are the map sets. And again, it's like the face and admins that are running this. I don't necessarily necessarily blame them so much just because they don't necessarily know Call of Duty but the fact that it's now on face and it's not on game battles anymore means that many that were involved that understand how this works aren't really involved anymore so this is the map set and it's actually kind of insane right first of all every single first round okay round one round two round three it's Rio map two every single time. And the very first round is Karachi, both hardpoint maps. Like, have you ever said anything like this? It's never how it works usually. Okay, we understand that in challenges, they won't generally do veto processes because it takes too long for not as much return as in the pro league. So, okay, fair enough. They'll come up with a map set and they'll use that map set per round. That's always generally how it's been done. But you would always see two different hardpoint maps at least. The fact that it's Karachi, both map one and map four. Like, if I'm a team that loves Karachi or hates Karachi, I'm like, am I? I just am I joking right now like this is what we're being forced to play and even round three is skid row both hard points so i don't really know who's come up with this idea i don't know if they're going to change it but um this is kind of wild right out of all seven rounds of assigned maps there's only one invasion and one sub base so i just don't know how they've come up with this solution and if i'm a team that's good at invasion and sub base i'm thinking like you know what exactly is going on here has someone paid off the refs that likes karachi or whatever the case happens to be we've got to talk though about miami versus vegas legion because I think I predicted this one to go Vegas in a game five. So I'm definitely going to take that. But man, the fall off for Miami might need to be studied. I don't really know if they've fallen off as much as other teams know what they're doing now. And they just really haven't improved dramatically at all. Now, to be fair, the game one, they won. And it was pretty impressive the way they do it. But... It's just classic heretics, you know, the way they played this series, starting off well, push comes to shove, and Vegas actually, can you believe it, have shown some ice here. They were the team, the, the only team to get reverse swept. When they got reverse swept by Gorillas straight out of the major in Boston, they had been reverse swept three times, Vegas, and nobody else had been reverse swept in the entire league up until that point. That is definitely not true as of last night, and this time it's actually Vegas doing the reverse sweeping, because they go down 1-0, they go down 2-0, but then... Nero comes to play. And I've got to say with, with Nero, like, I am somewhat surprised. I think that he didn't get an offer from a, a theoretically better team. The fact that Nero's on Vegas, I was like, are we sure about this? The guy is so good. When he's on points, he's like just insanely good. And this was a moment in the controller. He was doing similar things in the map for Harpoint as well. But Miami just full collapsed here. Like the way they lost their defense in about less than a minute or whatever it was, was really quick. You don't see that every day, especially because Vegas not typically known as the best control team. And then map four was when Nero really continued his reign of terror. I mean, have a look at this. I've got to go full screen for this one because yeah, it gets a ridiculous five piece here. And you've got to say Vegas deserve some credit. Now, yes, they've been beaten Gorillas the other day, 3-1, and now they're beaten Miami that aren't particularly great on current evidence. Like, Eric Boone was getting absolutely slammed here again, and it does raise questions as to whether this whole... I mean, look, I think everybody really knew Eric Boone in for Journey wasn't really going to move the needle as far as I was concerned. And it does seem to be the case. There's even an argument that Journey's better than Eric Boomer. Maybe they should bring it back in. But this is what I said the other day. When they signed Real to their bench, I'm like, they must be getting torched in scrims because to sign a second substitute surely indicates that they might need some big changes. So I guess when Rail's visa is approved, which hopefully it's going to be soon enough because Ravens struggle with that. But of course, Miami have got four or five visas already for their players this season. So I imagine they can resolve it. I'm expecting him to come into the team. So I think credit definitely belongs to Vegas for having the ice to bring this back. And Geo played really well this map. Of course, his every series he plays, you're expecting him to get a bit more better, a bit more comfortable. Nero again just had a monster series and I I guess that's the concern really for Vegas that going forward, Attach had a monster series against Gorillas the other day to win. Nero did the same here. So um, if they don't have one of those two guys dropping 1.4s, can they win? I don't know. I think they can if Geo keeps stepping up as he did this series. And Purge, 
is looking better on the sub. There's no doubt about it. This guy, you know, people were calling him Per J Nassim and all this, which is pretty wild. But, you know, he was getting slammed. And I think it was understandable the criticism he was getting. Worst player in the league, technically, based on the numbers after the major one. But they kept him. They clearly have faith in him as a player. Apparently, he's doing some of their in-game leading as well. And he definitely looks better on the sub. So, you know, I think there's definitely arguments to be made that you can get better players than Purge. But if it's working, which it is working, at least on the players they've played, the teams they've played so far, why not keep it around if they've got the confidence as a team? So they actually, can you believe it, went 2 and 0 here. After taking the victory, they went to a game 5, and the game 5 honestly was kind of all Vegas traffic, really. And I said it right, I was actually on the pre show that we did on Breaking Point that, you know, I don't have faith in Miami as a team with ice, if you know what I mean. Vegas are a team that had no ice at all for the start of it, but we know that attach as a player definitely has it, and it feels like with Stanley gone and Geo in, they do have a bit more of that clutch factor in play, which is massively important in series such as this. And I think it's one of the reasons why Miami have historically, or Heretics historically, have struggled on LAN, is that, you know, when it comes down to the big moments, they just aren't able to deliver in the same way. And their play style, you know, we talk about the chaos of Spanish COD and all these things, the inconsistencies. Nice 1v1 here from Attach. I think as soon as anybody saw Attach see Eric run into the building, I think everybody knew that Attach was going to hop this bomb, because um, that is the optimal play to make in the scenario, and Attach almost always makes in these situations the optimal play but Nero was the MVP 3-2 in the end at reverse reap again that Vegas managed to pull off here I mean they've been getting reverse reps so far this season they actually did one and it's actually absurd to think about but have a look at the numbers here this is Legions, even when they were Paris. They're stage records after two games. Obviously, MW was a different format, but since the stage format has existed, after two matches, I mean, I mean, this is bad, isn't it, really? Like, look at this. 0-2, 1-1 after in stage two, but they're almost always starting 0-2. And to be fair, last year, to be fair to Clay and all that, you know, respectable enough, 1-1 one one after their first two matches. This is the first time ever they've started 2-0. They've had lots of chances, but um, this is the first time ever that they've actually won their first two consecutive games. They've beat Gorillas, they've taken down Miami Heretics, not the best teams on paper, and they have a big test, of course, coming up today up against the Toronto Ultra. But I actually think the way the league is looking, Vegas are not in a bad spot at all to actually make it to this year's World Championship. Like, if you look at the other teams, Boston are below them, I'm pretty sure, and are struggling big time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. Thieves are struggling pretty big time as well. Surge look like they're on the decline. Miami look like they're on the decline. So, you know, and there's obviously Ravens down there as well that aren't particularly good either, and then Gorillas. So there's a good few teams that Vegas will be looking at thinking, well, we're better than them, we're better than them, and they have a pretty good online split here. So I wouldn't be, you know, surprised if Vegas, after this stage, find themselves in a reasonable position to qualify for the World Championship, which would be, I mean, immense if they could manage to put it off. I think that's got to be the immediate goal is just to be good enough to be you know to try and be a top six team then maybe if they want to try and actually win events or something they could think about maybe making another change but I think for now they've got to be happy with the trajectory but I think tonight is going to be quite telling in terms of can they take maps off Toronto or do they just get slammed right so last night as I mean it wasn't the craziest reverse sweep of last night though hands down that of course went to Optic versus Rocker and there have been some crazy reverse sweeps in COD of course people pointing out the Rocker versus Ultra you know Ultra reverse sweep where they went down 4-0, bring it back to 5-4. But in that series, sure, it was a massive choke, no doubt. But there weren't any, at least to my memory, there weren't any maps in that series, especially when they're on the verge of winning, that were choked in this way by the Minnesota choker. You know what I mean? Like, it was absurd how... 3v40, I mean, it's just ridiculous to even think about that you can be up 2-0 and on the verge of winning and then lose a round and then go on to get reverse swept in a ridiculous way. That's why I compared it to the Phase 100T series in Black Ops 4 because that was the only real comparable in terms of a reverse sweep happening in this way. And certainly online... It's one of the most insane ones. Obviously, there's also Phase Optic at Vanguard Major 1, which was notable for sure. And this was the immediate reaction as well from the guys after they won the series. You know, they didn't understand how they won this series, to be honest. They were mind blown about it. It was kind of funny as well watching Scump and the boys on the watch party's reaction as the control win was happening because they obviously heard, because, you know, the IRL is a little bit behind, or is it not behind time, obviously, ahead of time of the actual stream. So they were watching the stream and they obviously had heard 
heard you know, in the other room that the guys were absolutely mind blown at what was happened here. They obviously knew that Shotzi had the defuse as well in those final couple of seconds. Just, um, yeah, crazy reaction. But of course, today will be quite the test, I think, for Optic in terms of, you know, they took down Rocket, they don't play well. Can they actually deliver a quality performance against the Los Angeles Grillers and take them down 3-0 as we theoretically might expect them to? I've obviously got Optic winning that series. It's kind of tough to say otherwise. But we'll have a look at those series in just a second here because I wanted to mention this clip that Dashi was commenting on the other day. So this guy, I think he goes by, what is it, Ghost of 8 now? I think he used to have a channel called 8 Thoughts, which was kind of infamous, I think, in some respects within the kind of casual content creator scene a few years ago. And I don't know, went off the rails a bit, got banned. Now he's got a new channel, I don't know. But um, this is just hilarious clip, to be fair, the way that he's describing this. And whether you think that he's trolling or whether you think that he actually believes this is one or another, but I thought it was funny that basically everything he says is just major gas for Dashi and his shots. In the, I guess, Olympics of gaming. See, this is why I don't think he's trolling, because he's actually like going on a rant. Like, he's, this the is what kind of like made me think, wait, is he dead ass? Are using some kind of banned <laughs> substance to get an upper hand, but these guys, it's beyond some kind of capability or realm of thought or realm of reality. These I guys might be might cheating, be chat. Kind of Honestly, this guy Loki might have just exposed us. I'm sorry, you guys, to find out through. Against everybody I don't even know this guy's dollars as well. Ghost eat. I'm, I'm sorry, you guys. Bucks, he hit center chest, center I'm sorry, you guys, have to find out like this well. from this far away. Is this good shot? I mean, this is yep. great shot. That's soft aim out, though. Unfortunately, everything is locking on the exact same spot. <laughs> no, he's a professional gamer ghost, and you're just a boomer who's jealous that you're not good at Call of Duty. I mean, Jesus, look at the margin for error there. Literally oh going God. through wood, boxes, walls, that big of a margin for error, and the guy just, like, no problem. Don't I don't know. Problem. How does he do it? That's why he's an optic. You're not. <laughs> he's good. You suck. Here's the last one. With the pistol, still has not missed a damn shot. Nope. Oh, that's Center good tracking. Again. Yeah, that's... Look at it. Look how it Head just shot. tracks. Look how it just tracks. Yeah, I agree. I just say I agree. it, man. This is the most suspect gameplay I've ever seen in my life. These guys are good. <laughs> I know they're good. I give you they're good. But they're not that good. There's no way in flying. Yeah, they can't be that good. That these guys are not using some kind of... Have to be using something. When it comes to the Call of Duty. Come on, man. Really? Really? Dude, chat, tell me this shit wasn't fucking comedy, though. It's, it's two things. It's gas. But I think, honestly, I, I thought it was more like humor than anything. I thought this shit was fucking hilarious, dude. Dude, just the way he was, dude, just the way he was describing scenarios was so funny. So everyone that knows knows that Dashi shoots fairly straight, and of course he was doing that yesterday, he was the only player to go positive for Optic against the, against the Minnesota Rocker. Basically everyone else statistically got slammed, and Dashi was the only one going positive. Again, just such an absurd series. But as Dashi says, one game five, definitely didn't play a best call today. Proud of the boys for fighting the entire way. They play Gorillas tonight, and just to quickly mention on some of these players... Linz, despite being clear Rookie of the Year front runner for now, and I don't really expect that to change, he still hasn't won that many series. Just compared to the last couple of years, Scrappy last year won 30 series in his rookie season, which is the record in the CDL era. Insight won 29 in, in Cold War, but um, if he was in right at the start of the game, he probably would have won more than that, but you know how it went with, you know, Zinni got dropped and all this. Shotzi, Illy at 26, and then we go down from there. This season, though, I mean, we're quite a way into the season now and the top rookie only has five wins which is it's understandable based on the way that the league is structured and the fact that the top teams are definitely the top teams and they don't have rookies on their team this year but um yeah the fact that Linz and Abuja are only at five is kind of rough right because I think Linz is a much better player than these numbers suggest but they don't play today they play again tomorrow actually the Minnesota Rocker today's matches though are as follows this first series I think is a bit more interesting than it looks on paper I might say that and then also just come out and slam them but you know we've seen that Toronto they did it the other day against Rocker they came out and in a series that they probably felt very comfortable they would win and you know it took them until game five to really lock in and clutch them in that moment legion to be fair, Legion will probably be quite happy that they beat Miami, you know? They're quite happy taking their 10 points. But this is quite a good test for Vegas because we know that Minnesota Rocker, they are a team in that, I would say, top five range, probably. I think they've got, they can't really be any lower than that, given the other teams around them. And they went very close against Ultra last week, very close against Optic yesterday. Definitely should have won. So this is where Vegas get to say, okay, if we want to be, you know, top six, maybe even make it to a championship Sunday or something like that, then you've got to show some competition against Ultra. You know, don't necessarily have to win two maps or whatever just you know be competitive i think it's going to be a good test for legion today if they can do it 
nobody's really going to bet against Ultra. And in terms of ice and all the other factors, you've got to think Ultra are going to be the favourites. But I'm interested to see because I think it's quite the test for Legion here. But also Toronto will want to get back on their hard point winning streak, which was snapped by Rocker last time on the Rio, which we might see a Rio because Legion like it. And I think Ultra still kind of like it as well. Then Optic Gorillas. Tough to see past Optic taking this one, especially after the momentum they gained of yesterday. Gorillas, and I think Assault is my player to watch because if they continue to underperform, Assault's got to go. Like he's just been so underwhelming this year, to be honest, apart from like the hand warm, I think at the major, which made people like him. But apart from that, he's not been great. He wasn't great against um, Legion the other week either. And probably the most interesting series though is Miami Thieves because this is a must win for probably both teams, but definitely for Thieves, right? Heretics have won like three of their last 18 maps. So, you know, Thieves have got to feel confident and I think I'm going to take Thieves in this. If, if Thieves can't win this one, like <laughs> I think it might just be time to chalk it up. So very much enjoyed to your thoughts on all this in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.